Hey y'all, how's it going? Star Wars Celebration is officially over and now we have time to talk about all the goodness that came out of Star Wars Convention. Now, I actually did a recap of day one, which was just jam packed with stuff in one day alone. So if you wanna do, uh, watch that, go check that out. I've got that linked here or down below in the description, but there has been some other great stuff that came out of Star Wars Celebration from Friday on through today where I'm recording this Sunday and I'm so excited to talk about it. So I want to dive into first the Ahsoka series because there's some good stuff coming out of this and I think it's a lot of stuff that many of us probably had been betting money on anyway, but let's dive into it. So first we're gonna start with the leaks. So <laughs> I am so sorry Disney, last time we had a Mandalorian season three leak and now we've got an Ahsoka leak. And what's funny is that Rosario Dawson said at the convention that they'd only been filming for three weeks and yet they were still able to come out with a little bit of a reel for the audience that was there. Now I'm not gonna play it here, I'm just gonna kind of describe what I saw, which was really kind of minimal um for what from what i remember there were just some establishing shots very star wars-esque um like nothing to shake a stick at but the biggest thing two biggest things but one of the biggest things to stick out was there was a shot i believe in a ship from behind and on the left hand side well on the right hand side you've got ahsoka tano which would be rosario dawson and on the left hand side uh undeniably hera Syndulla, you know with her green tendrils <laughs> and all like undeniably her and it was announced that there is some casting news that Natasha Liu Bordizzo I hope I didn't butcher that will be playing a live action Sabine Wren so here she is with Rosario Dawson they did kind of an interview together at Star Wars Celebration uh but that's really awesome now I hope I can show this as well because this was a scene um right at the bottom here from that Ahsoka teaser and it's been circulating a lot so I feel comfortable showing it. Um, but essentially, so this would be Natasha as the live action Sabine. Of course, that is her <laughs> cartoon counterpart. And we've got the ghost crew. So whatever's going on here, listen, I think at this point, we all know that it is Rebels 2.0 just in the live action. And also I've gone through this before, but if you don't know what Star Wars Rebels is, it's an animated series that takes place during the Empire and these are some of the people who are kind of on the fringe of the rebellion, um, you know, just kind of sticking it to the man when it comes to the empire. So you've got Sabine Wren here, you've got Ezra Bridger, Kanan Jarrus, the bat guy who I don't really care to remember and the lawful cat and they've got a little, um, what do you call it? Droid called Chopper, which apparently appeared on stage. That's pretty cool <laughs> at Star Wars Celebration. Um, but their whole thing is, yeah, they were just kind of, like I said, a fringe group that are out um, going on missions and kind of running away from the Empire. Um, and at the same time, we will, we've got things thrown into the mix like Inquisitors and eventually Ahsoka Tano comes. And I believe Captain Rex comes along. I haven't watched the whole thing <laughs> Because it's a, it's a lot, <laughs> but so the whole thing, of course, is you kind of have to have spoilers towards the end, as I've been talking about over and over and over again. Grand Admiral Thrawn, they come face to face with him. Uh, he and Ezra Bridger, Ezra Bridger is force sensitive, taught by Kanan Jarrus, <laughs> get stuck in the world between worlds. They kind of disappear, and now this sets up the whole thing about where the heck is Ezra Bridger, and apparently, you know, we're gonna have Ahsoka and Sabine Wren together on the hunt for Ezra and apparently, you know, live action Harrison Dilla too. We can't have Kane and Charis there. Do you know why? Spoilers. <laughs> I probably just gave it away. <laughs> Sorry. But you really do have to understand the whole lore of Star Wars Rebels in order to understand the Ahsoka series. Uh, so there's a little bit of a barrier to entry. Uh, you might just be able to skirt by watching The Mandalorian and The Book of Boba Fett because it's all part of that um, Mandalorian universe. But I think Dave Filoni is like, gonna make Star Wars Rebels a required watching. Uh, but I'll give it to them if they find a way to make it accessible to everyone because, hey, you know, the, it's, you know, it, it's irrefutable that live action just is more, not well received, but gets a wider audience, right, than 
all of the animated stuff so we shall see um i would love to see though not to say that i'm a huge ruffles fan like maybe live action kane and jars and a flashback and i mean they also <laughs> so many spoilers he right and harrison Dula have a kid and so maybe we'll also get to see the kid and um this as well so it's a lot of exciting stuff and i'll be looking forward to that when it comes 2023 now on to a trailer that actually was released during star wars celebration and online so it's not illegal i can show this um we got the official trailer for the bad batch season two now again we're we're really getting into all of the uh animated stuff right thanks to our wonderful guy here, Dave Filoni, who's just been expanding this universe like crazy. And um, when it comes to the Bad Batch, how do I explain it? Uh, there are these, this, another French group of clone troopers this time who are not, you know, were not necessarily with the programming that all the other clone troopers had. So they found themselves immune from Order 66 and essentially in season one they had just been on the run from the empire the empire wanted to recruit them they had a bad conscience about it uh except for one of their members crosshair who kind of just willingly was like yeah i'll go you know he, he's kind of like this evil sketchy kind of guy anyway so that was that we're gonna have to talk about spoilers for season one going into season two as well just because this is the nature <laughs> of discussing a second season so so this trailer doesn't give away a ton about what will be going on in season two aside from the fact that the gang is all back let's see do i remember everyone that's wrecker that looks like tech echo okay i remember echo Rambo? No. <laughs> oh, okay. Hunter. <laughs> it took me like five minutes to search. <laughs> and of course, we have Omega, who is looking a little bit older. And I believe they even said in a thread that here, yeah, that Omega is a little bit older, but she still has so much heart. <laughs> Y'all, I don't, I'm gonna be honest, I wasn't really a fan of Omega's character. It's just like she's too nice. Um, oh, right, that's the other part. Omega is, it seems like, the only recorded instance of a Jango Fett clone being a girl. So that was kind of interesting. They're all brothers and sisters here. But it just seems like <laughs> she's such a goody two-shoes. And every time they want to kind of defeat their enemies by force, she comes in and she's like, no, we shouldn't do that. We should, you know, preach love and kindness. And then they're like, hmm, you're right. We should defeat them with love and kindness. So <laughs> I, I don't know if Omega is ever going to grow on me. I'm sorry, but it's just not been, I've not been vibing with her character <laughs> the entire series. So it does look like they're just going to be taking on more missions. Um, whoever this character is who's been giving the missions is kind of like do you want your freedom and they're kind of like hey we are free and i'm like no you're not you know you had to fake all of your codes you're still out running crosshair in the empire so it seems to me they're just gonna have to be doing a lot a whole lot of what they were doing in season one which is outrunning the empire like i just said <laughs> so they'll be out running this guy admiral rampart who is kind of the head of the new stormtrooper program right as the empire transitions from using clones to actual human beings and then is that commander cody i i'm still not, i'm still barely just getting used to the clone wars but hey that's that what i do like about this though is that there is some bridging over from the clone wars into the early empire era which you know with like the rise of palpatine like that we don't have a ton of on screen so i have to at least hand it over to them for that um so i guess i will kind of tentatively be watching when this comes out in the fall i don't know if i'm going to keep up with it every week but i'll probably kind of pop in on it here or there just to you know see how the gang is doing okay so and in other trailer news that i can show you that's not illegal we got an official teaser for jedi survivor which is the long anticipated follow-up to star wars jedi fallen order um and it looks really really amazing they say that this game is coming out 2023 so you know between delays and uh, workings so we'll, let, we'll see if this even comes out in 2023 but it sounds like hopefully they're pretty far along with it and in this you don't really get a ton to dissect we've got some shots of your ship we need to really 
looks good. Super scary. OMG. So, I mean, essentially, right, Cal is a Jedi Padawan, you know, during the age, of course, where, well, now he's no longer Padawan, but, you know, still using the Force and in hiding and kind of going about... I'll be honest, I never finished the <laughs> the game. I never finished watching the game, but I just love the idea of it. It looks really cool. <laughs> like the first game came out so long ago, I'm just drawing a blank about everything that happened. But I think I did get to play a little bit of it. I did get to be hands-on with it. And I just found it really exciting. You know, whenever you can swing a lightsaber and, and mash some buttons, it's always fun. And I'm also glad that I'm not the only person who doesn't know who's in this Bafta tank. There's Cal Kestis right there and his little droid. Um, so good to see him back, but <laughs> yeah, I'm really going to have to catch up on all the Fallen Order lore because I just kind of pick up bits and pieces of it here and there to just like floating around in the ether, but this makes me excited and this is only available on PS5, Xbox Series X, or S, and PC, so look out for that hopefully next year if EA can make it to the finish line, if not, Take your time, don't rush this, don't make it buggy because i um, really looking forward to see how it comes out. And lastly, just a few things that stood out to me here and there, bits and pieces coming out from Star Wars Celebration. We have a new Lego Star Wars uh, special coming out on Disney Plus called Star Wars Summer Vacation. The summer will be fully operational, very cute. This is kind of the only content, new content coming out of Star Wars, uh, Star Wars or Lucasfilm that's post Rise of Skywalker and it's all non-canonical <laughs> so you know it, that's fine these have just been kind of fun a little childish you know maybe not for everyone but I've been enjoying them so far um in addition coming to Disney Plus is Star Wars Tales of the Jedi and this is really cute that's baby Ahsoka and one of those is her mother I didn't think she came from like an Amazonian village or like, you know, Princess uh, Diana from Wonder Woman, but it looks like that's the case, at least according to some of these photos. So essentially what this series is about is it is a shorts series. So it would be a series of shorts, cartoons, animations, um, kind of looking back on the early lives of some of the Jedi. So Ahsoka Tano will be one of them. Count Dooku will be one of them. We'll see him as a Padawan. And as well, they say we will also get uh, some Qui-Gon Jinn who uh, will be voiced by Liam Neeson. And it's, they also say his son <laughs> in this series. So that actually sounds like fun. We do get some Liam Neeson coming back, at least in one capacity. And so that's just three Jedi. There's going to be six uh, shorts total. So I don't know if they're going to continue to mix it up or maybe we'll have two episodes with each Jedi. Who knows? But sounds like fun and I guess I'll be tuning in. It looks really cute. And then lastly, last announcement that I found interesting is that the next Star Wars movie will be from Taika Waititi released in 2023. So that means that Patty Jenkins Rogue Squadron, which has a title, we've got to see a uh, clip of her talking about creating this, um, is going to be pushed, is delayed because it sounds like they're swapping release date so it's kind of interesting we really haven't heard much from taika waititi about his star wars movie so the fact that it's coming out next year sometime late like uh late next year as kathleen kennedy has confirmed is a little i don't i don't want to call it suspicious just a little strange um to see that we've gotten really nothing out of this and now they're like yeah get ready and you know like maybe 18 months <laughs> we'll get a new star wars movie so i've got faith in taika waititi shred of fate in um uh, in patty jenkins but we shall see so guys that is a wrap on star wars celebration 2022 a lot of great news a lot of great announcements let me know in the comments down below what you uh found most interesting your favorite bit of news from star wars celebration let me know if i missed anything um i would be happy to hear what you guys are excited for um if you did not see my day one recap of Star Wars Celebration, you gotta check that out in the link down below. And you have to absolutely watch my review for episodes one and two of Obi-Wan Kenobi. It's a great discussion. I have it linked there. And I am just so excited to be reviewing this series because I think it's already off to a great start. So anyway, guys, please be sure to leave a like if you enjoyed it and subscribe for more Star Wars. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.